Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to all my students who are taking this course in project management. So, you have completed uh, 5 lectures of half an hour each which is almost 1 week of classes and I am sure considering the different uh, books I have suggested in the second slide of the first class, uh, my students and people who are interested in taking this course have started the reading uh, the course. And for any queries, as you know, NPTEL has its own forum and they would be uh, TAs and obviously, I would be there to answer queries which are ever are being raised by the set of students who are doing this course. So, in the, um, this is the sixth class for the second week, second week first class, which is the sixth lecture. So, as I discussed, so it basically the idea was to for, for any project management work which is being done, we discussed they were the sponsor, the owner and the user. And I also mentioned who are the stakeholders and how the stakeholders can be negatively and positively affected depending on the project which is being undertaken. So, if you look at this uh, slide, it basically has a very holistic view of how the overall project management concept as such considering the stakeholders, the users, the owner, the sponsors who are there in, in the system, they are affected positive or negatively depending on how things are put by the service organization depending on what type of project is it is whether it is in the, in the industrial area or in the service sector. They would be the interested organizations who would be positively or negatively affected by that. So, if it can be the either the organization itself, it can be the ancillary units who, who are trying to get the benefit by being part of this project man work management team as such. They would be the media, the society and as I mentioned the societal impact is very important. So, obviously, the project organization as such, if you see the, the lower portion now of, of this slide where my, where I am hovering the pen, basically it consists of the base organization, the project management team, the project management uh, overall uh, setup, the project team how they are doing and the project team is if you remember I had said that the, the overall structure or the HR scheme would be both horizontal and vertical considering that it is a part and parcel of the overall organization for which the project management team is working to implement that work. So, they would be contractors, subcontractors would basically work in tandem to complete the project in such a way that it gives the benefit for which it is basically being, being planned for. The base organization which is the permanent organization of the project personnel, basically they lend uh, different type of people depending on their expertise to the project management team. The base organization is an indirect stakeholder since it will frequently define the frame and the overall conditions and the policies for the execution of the project. So, if Tata Steel or Tata Motors or say for example, Reliance or LNT, they are undertaking a project, it would mean that the project basically is defined based on the overall objective of what the company is planning to do. Or say for example, on the other hand consider the government is, is trying to b b revamp the overall the, the public distribution system and obviously, the pu public distribution system revamping work if it is taken as a project, the main, main, main organization which is doing that is the government of India and they will define the policies based on which the overall project would be taken. The project management comprises the project manager as I already mentioned or the leader of the project, the management group and possibly a project office which is basically working in, in tandem with the organization. The project team consists of all personnel working on the project whether indirect or direct directly. So, it can be the design department which you are doing some work, 
which may be related to a small part of the project or it can be say for example, the procurement department who are totally involved. So, how the overall structure of the project management team with respect to the organization is defined would basically give a feel that what is the success rate of the project. So, if there is a lot of conflict between the organizational structure and the organizational the philosophy with respect to the project management team and the project management's philosophy. So, obviously, at the end of the day, the project management's overall objective would not be met for the case for the organization and obviously, there would be a conflict, but if there is no conflict as such obviously, it would mean that they are working hand to hand in tandem. Contractors are all the external suppliers as I mentioned in the last slide of all the external suppliers of goods, services, machine, tools, whatever is required to implement the project. An example can serve to illustrate the concept of, of risk management. So, consider that you are constructing a house we are about to pour concrete for the ground floor. So, when you are trying to basically build up a house, first what you will do, you will basically have a design of the house and before that obviously, we will procure the land, get all the, all the official documents ready. So, that, that if you consider the project is basically starting from inception stage, where you, where you have the idea of, of trying to build the house. But considering that all those things are over, so your main focus of trying to build up the house would be to have the base build up that means, dig and, and, and do, do all, all the concrete laying work. Then you will basically build up the ground floor or the basement and once the basement is starts and the overall framework is built up, you basically go from floor to floor, the first floor, the second floor, third floor and once it is completed, obviously you will finish the electrical work, you will basically finish the water work, you will put on the lift, you will finish the wooden work and whatever work as are needed. We have already ordered say for example, the concrete on June 10th, however, it might be that, that the piping installation of the floor may not be finished on time. So, I am just giving an example. So, just few minutes or few seconds back what I said, what the broad major macro level work which needs to be done for building the house. So, let us assume as, as, as stated in this slide that there is 90 percent probability that the piping will be finished in time and that the pouring and the concrete can start as planned on June 10th. Now, till now we have not used the concept of probability. So, whatever we have been discussing on a very qualitative framework always meant that whether for, uh, for the concept of precedence diagram or whether for the CPM which is the critical path method we will consider even if time was important, we need to find out the time because scheduling was the main focus of the project management concept as such. The time was always deterministic in nature. Later on we will see as we do the PERT which is program evaluation review technique, time is non-deterministic, it has a distribution which is the beta distribution and as you, if you remember, we did mention about the most pessimistic, most optimistic time and based on that we would be doing the calculations and the study. So, if probability comes into the picture, it means that in a very simple sense that out of the 100 such work which we will be able to do, there would be 90 such instances that the work is done. So, obviously, it would have an implication that what would be the end time now being calculated would be based on the fact that there would be probabilities for each and every stage. So, if you are considering the stages as I mentioned for building the house, basement being done, concrete being poured in the basement, the framework being built, then the first ground floor, first floor, second floor, third floor were, be, were being built, then the electrical connections, the water connections, the lift, the wooden work, so on and so forth. So, it would mean that if there is a probability of trying to finish each and every work at different stage, the overall probability of trying to finish of the whole project would now depend on each individual probabilities, considering that they are dependent on each other. So, dependent structure would come into the picture and we will try to find out that how we can find out the overall probability of trying to finish the work on time. Now, if there is a probability concept for time, it would also mean that the resource constraint or the resource utilization would also depend on what is the probability of trying to finish the work on time. 
Now, let me give you a very simple example, even though actual solving of the problems will come later on. Consider that you are planning to finish building the house or the bridge, consider the second example being a bridge in a, in a time frame of say for example, 90 days. So, if it is 90 days, it means you will need 3 months. So, now, now, if you consider that if it is 3 months and everything is deterministic, so any utilization of resources would be deterministic in nature in the sense that if I want to basically finish my work less than 90 days, then per day utilization of resources, whether man, material, an amount of money or trying to utilize a separate um, cement mixing machine or trying to basically bring more truckloads of cement or more stone chips or trying to bring, up, bring more laborers, more engineers would basically entail an increase in the cost, but at the same time it will also ensure the work is finished in a deterministic framework less than 90 days, the example which I just gave. But now, if the probability comes into the picture, it would mean that on an average with some probability, that probability would basically be the combination of the probability for each and every events which is happening there to build that whole project, would basically be certain mean value and expected value to finish that work. So, these probabilities would mean that they would be some standard deviation, because the moment you have a probability, it would mean for a probability distribution, there would be a mean value median would also come into the picture, we will consider mean and median separately. And for the beta distribution which I mentioned at the beginning of, of this lecture, for the PERT case. And then we will see that how standard deviations will affect that if there is a resource constraint or the resource have to be utilized in a much bigger way to finish the work much before time, much before 90 days, then the probability would also be utilized in order to calculate what is the overall resource utilization which is being done in the probabilistic sense. So, we will we'll consider that later on. So, continuing that, in the case of the pouring of the con concrete, um, uh, there is a 90 percent probability as I just mentioned in the, in the fourth bullet point. So, in case the pouring in the concrete must be cancelled or postponed due to some reason like whether the, uh, the cement mixing machine was not working properly or the cement did not arrive on time or whether the base work has not been finished or the person who was employed to do the work did not arrive on time or, or was sick. So, there can be different reasons for that. So, there is a cancellation fees of Indian rupees 2000. So, which means that if it is delayed by one day there would be an extra cost of 2000 rupees. So, extra cost I am just considering as a bulk, it can be divided into different components also. So, the probability that the fee will, ap fee will apply in a 10 percent, because 90 percent probability is it will finish, 10 percent it would not finish. And the consequence would basically be on a rate of 2000 rupees, the risk associated. Risk means, now if you remember I had been mentioning risk time and again in the first 5 classes and I did mention that risk in, in the probability sense means the, the variation, variations of the dispersions of the variance. So, there are different risk measures also, but when you convert the risk concept into the, for the project framework and even in any decision making, actually what we want to understand is that what is the implication of the risk it has on the overall bottom line. So, does risk mean that I am going to lose 10 rupees, does risk mean that I am going to basically lose 1 crore rupee or does it mean that I am going to basically lose 100 dollars or 200 euros, whatever it is depending on what whichever currency denomination I am using. So, in this case, if 10 percent probability that it would not be finished, it means that for each day if it is 2000, so it will basically mean that I entail a cost of 2000 into 0.1. Now, if the number of days increases, obviously it would mean that if each and every day are independent of each other, then I will very simply calculate the sum of all the probabilities multiplied by the per day cost and try to find out the cumulative one. So, let me just very briefly give you that how dependence and independence will come into the picture, considering that all my students are decently aware, aware that how the expected value, the covariances, the standard deviations are calculated. So, see for example, if I consider the one day cost as 2000, 
So, this is not an exact problem, but I am trying to basically expand the thought process of the students so that they can appreciate that how the calculations would be taken up later on. So, it was 2000 multiplied by the probability which is p i of failing which was 10 percent. Now, say for example, if the number of days was say for example, d i considering there are 10 days. So, obviously, the sum would be starting from i is equal to 1 to 10, but based on the fact that the probabilities and then days and the rate of payment are independent of each other. This may not be the case. Why? Let me consider it in, in, in lead details. See, for example, you are delaying the project. So, it may happen that the customer to whom you are trying to deliver the product may have a clause in the contract that for delays of first 5 days, the cost is 2000 rupees per day. So, if you have basically delayed your project for 5 days and less, then this calculation which is shown here considering the dependent structure is there for the probability and the delays or the number of days is as given here. But say for example, the contract says that after 5 days, the overall cost increases from 2000 to 3000 rupees. So, which means for the first 5 days, your calculation will be based on the fact that is 2000 rupees per day for the first 5 days. And if I go into say for example, for the for the next case that this summation was basically for done for 5 days for the 6th, 7th, 8th and so on and so forth days depending on the contract, the calculation will be calculated based on the fact it is 3000 rupees multiplied by the probability consider still it is 10 percent even though it may, may not be true multiplied by the number of days. But remember this number of days here and this th number of days here is different. In the first instant which is number 1, the number of days would be maximum 5 because as per the contract. In the second case, the number of days would be calculated starting from the 6th day. So, if the total delay is 10 number of days, the first 5 calculations will be based on 2000 rupees. Second set of 5 days calculation will be based on the fact that is 3000 rupees. That was the first number point which I wanted to highlight. Next consider the probabilities are changing, which is absolutely possible considering that the delay which I have said on 90 percent is due to the fact if it is delayed say for example, for the first instant. But it may so happen that due to the non arrival of, of say for example, the cement or the problem of the cement mixture or for different type of problems which I mentioned, the probability may increase or may decrease. And in that case, the concept of, of the calculation of the probabilities, even though I have used the symbol of PI and PI in both the cases, the values of the probabilities would be different. Hence, the total cost of the risk based on which you will try to find out what is the overall risk for the project would depend on the probability, would depend on the number of days and would also depend on the rate of, of loss a particular project will face for each and every number of days, which in the first instance for 5 days is 2000, in the second instance is 3000. Next to extend the discussion forward, consider the cost of 2000 which is given for the, the example which I just finished was in a conglomeration way or in a collated way. But now consider the 2000 is has been broken down into say for example, for stage 1, stage 2, stage 3 which are the stages in the project and the total cost in each stages are say for example, 1000 rupees, 500 rupees, 500 rupees. So, the total collective value is 2000 rupees and in the ne next instant 3000 has been broken down to say for example, it is 1000, 1000 and 1000. So, the second and the third are increasing by 500. So, 500 becomes 1000 and 500 becomes 1000. So, basically it means that 1000 remains 1000 for the first 5 days and for the, um, the number of days greater than 5. This is 500 as I mentioned and this is 500. So, the total cost if you see is 2000 which is matching here. Now, in this case, third, second case, if it is 1000, 1000, 1000, it means three, there are 3000, so it means basically means 3000. Now, if that is the case, then slowly we will understand that the probabilities which I mentioned, P i in the first equation and P i in the second equation were for the overall delay or the so called the cost which you are incurring. 
but it may so happen the probabilities are now defined for each and every units. Hence, the rate of change of the probabilities plus the number of days plus the cost would basically be independent interdependent sorry interdependent on each other such that trying to find out the overall loss of the risk would be complicated that is true, but if you use some simple equation you will be able to understand how the overall cost can be found out in a very simple manner. So, the technical and economic risk of the project fail into four categories even though I gave a very simple not solved example, but I tried to basically first start off trying to inculcate some interest in the students, we will try to solve the problems later on. So, the four categories um, of the economic risk are the scope of the work, the quality of the work, the schedule if there is um, uh, over exceeding of the schedule time and the cost. So, depending on the cost structure which I mentioned if you basically overstep your schedule penalty is there, but obviously on the other side would also be there that if you are able to finish your, your work well before time you will get some benefit. So, in that case the loss would be considered as negative which means a profit is coming into being coming into the picture. So, that can be considered as a so, sort of negative risk which is profit. So, uncertainty and, and, and the risk in the project management concept would be basically there is, a, there is uncertainty for both the, the from the point of view of probability of completion from the prompt view of the cost structure per day which you incur for each and every uh, event or, or, or job which are being scheduled in the project. There would be a delay number of days. So, de depending on the delay number of days the cost per day may also change. So, obviously, what I mentioned about the 2000 rupees and the 3000 rupees, it may be linear in some of the case is the cost structure may be non-linear, where in the non-linear part trying to find out the overall cost may become a little bit difficult. So, uncertainty has basically the risk factor, the opportunity factors which is the opportunity cost lost. It will have basically the implications in the risk. In, the in terms of money as I mentioned in, in terms of uh, Indian rupees and the impact which you are trying to find out even though I mentioned time and again they are independent in the general case they may, may not be independent they would be independent. So, if they are dependent obviously apart from the overall expected value to find out the, uh, the loss you will try to find out what are the correlation matrix or the covariance matrix existing between different type of jobs in the overall project such that they would have a negative impact or a much more um, um, expanded Im impact in trying to find out the overall loss for the project. So, types of risk to continue they can be as I mentioned operational risks they are connected to the internal circumstances in the project and be controlled by the project team. They can be strategic risk is the prospective impact on earning on capital from adverse business circumstances. Say for example, if a competitor is coming into the market based on the similar type of project and obviously, there is a demand for such products considering that you are trying to basically float a product which may be either a washing machine or, a, or try to basically come up with a car or new design of a car or new design of a moped or trying to come up with different type of medicine whatever it is there is a competitor in the market. So, obviously, the decision on the competitor would adversely affect the decision making process which you are going to have for the overall project. So, they may be apart from the competitors um, um, effect negative effect they can be improper implementation of decisions or the lack of responsiveness to the industry change. So, it would mean that the industry is not able to basically accept the overall technology or accept the overall product which you are trying to float in the market or the customer is not able to appreciate the product obviously, you face a loss then the overall project for the organization point of view for or for the organization which is trying to basically come up with the project may boomerang and may, may have definitely a huge impact in the negative sense. They would be contextual uh, contextual risk it is connected to the circumstances outside the project that may influence the scope of the work and the performance of the organization. So, if they if the overall energy is divided into different spheres which is not related to the project as such obviously, it will have a negative impact. Broadly speaking the project risk management requires us to ask the following questions. So, we will ask or trying to answer this these important questions which will definitely try to um, uh, solve many of the risk 
problems uh, which projects face. So, the questions are what is like what is likely to happen? What is the probability of impact of say for example, resource considering being there or say for example, political uncertainty be there or say for example, some competitor coming up with different type of products or say for example, technology um, uh, changing rapidly or say for example, the economy or the political situation effect being affected in a very drastic sense. Consider for Intel chips, the technology development is so fast that trying to basically come up with a project where you want to plan to build up some chip building factory would not suffice because the competitors are always much much ahead than you, your team. Or say for example, if you want to uh, build up um, or uh, design a, a drug and considering there are different type of competitors. So, the sunk cost for any, any, any medicine is very high. So, cons and they are considered Pfizer, then Merck, Abbott. So, cons these are the three companies just, just an example. They are trying to build up a drug in, in, in tuberculosis or say for example, HIV or um, dengue. And in that case, if the cost structure for three different these companies as I mentioned are different, it may mean or if the scientific advancement of one team is much higher than the other or much faster than the other, then the other two basic players who are there in the market would may face a huge loss in trying to implement that project. So, our next question would be what can be done to minimize the probability of impact of these events. So, should we scrap the project, should we take up the project, is it necessary to come up with a uh, project management concept as such or we can buy the product from the market and sell it in the market. Consider this, if uh, Tata Motors is flying to build up, uh, build a, the radiator of the, of the car. So, is it necessary that I, I invest my overall money in trying to build up a radiator of a car or I can get it from the vendor at a much cheaper price? Because there is lock in cost, there is labor cost which have, the, the Tata Motors have to basically incur for that. I am just giving Tata Motors as an example, it can be any other car manufacturing company. So, we will also ask the question what cues will signal the need for such an action. So, is it that uh, the, the, the competitors has uh, as I mentioned just few minutes back all the, all the relevance which are there which basically has an overall impact on, on, on the decision making process. So, if it gives us some signal that things are not going as planned, so we will definitely try to adjust our overall decision making process and, and go back to the drawing board and try to understand whether that uh, decision of trying to take up that project as such in a project management phase is really relevant. We will also consider or ask the questions uh, to ourselves that what are the likely outcomes of these problems and what are and what are my anticipated response. So, anticipated response may be I want to invest more try to finish the work much faster or may try to scrap the project or I try to delay the project or try to basically pass on the project to the vendors. So, there can be different um, consequences for the decision. Risk management follows a four stage process. So, one is basically risk identification. And the next uh, stage is the analysis of the probability of the consequences. What are the probabilities? Are they discrete? Are they continuous? What is the joint distribution for them? Whether the concept of, of um, variance should be used or whether the concept of covariance should be used or the correlation coefficient is important. So, that would be uh, important for us for the next the second stage. Then we will also consider what are the risk mitigation strategies. So, how we can reduce the risk? Should we try to basically uh, put um, our money in not in one project or in different project is basically trying to put the, uh, all your eggs in different baskets not in one such that your overall risk mitigation is, is there. Then we will try to basically control and document how the risk mitigation has been done such that it could be a learning process for us for different type of projects in later on uh, for, for different type of organizational structures or organizational work which we are doing. So, with this I will end the second lecture and, uh, and definitely again urge my students to have a look at, uh, at the slides and as well as read the books. And for the books, the references again I am mentioning is also being given in the first slide. And for any queries, uh, the students can as per the norm definitely contact the, the forum and get their clarification done. Thank you very much.